Welcome to The Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. Hi, and welcome to The Laboratory video series. My name is Chanika Lokam from Miracles Innovation Labs, and today we'll be talking a bit about how you can build waterfall-based bots using Microsoft's Bot Framework. We'll talk about how you can create complex flows rather than just simple to and fro messages. We'll be using a health check bot use case to understand this flow by using the Bot Builder Node.js SDK. So before we go into the details of how we built the bot using the Bot Builder SDK and the waterfall model, a quick introduction to the Microsoft Bot Framework. The Microsoft Bot Framework is a great platform to build robust bots that can support multiple channels including Slack, Skype, and many more. It comes in three main components. The first one being its emulator that allows developers to test their bots within their development environment. It also comes with a bot builder SDK that allows them to um, utilize languages such as Node.js and c -sharp to build their bots. It also comes with a set of connectors that make it really easy to configure and plug in your bot backend to multiple channels. It comes with a great ecosystem of services, including Lewis, which is a natural language processing and understanding engine. It also comes with a set of Microsoft cognitive services and also Bing search services that you can utilize and integrate into your bots. To deploy your bots, there's a great set of compute options, including Azure Functions, being able to deploy using containers, and obviously the cloud. So first of all, let's look at a simple dialog by using the Bot Builder SDK. Let's say, suppose we went ahead and gave it a greeting or asked for its capabilities. The bot would immediately respond back with one simple response. Essentially, your backend would be matching the intent, which in this case is capabilities, and would be responding back with a predefined message. So in this case, the user says, what can you help me with? Lewis understands that it's an intent dot capabilities, and your bot backend would then respond using the user session, saying, I can help with conducting help chips work for your system. Now, in most cases, this would be very good, but as we go into complex dialogue flows where users have to be asked for questions and validated for their answers, you need a lot more capability. So to understand that, let's explore how the bot's dialogue stack is maintained using a health check use case. So in this case, we want users to be able to conduct health checks on their systems where they ask for a system and an environment and would be able to understand whether it's running or whether it's not reachable using a ping command. So essentially this is very easy, but with this automation, your user would be able to query n number of systems from a database, and we'll look into that architecture in a minute. So let's go ahead and start off our waterfall dialog. So the first one would be user asking to run a health check on a particular system, in this case, SAP PI. The first thing that would happen would be that the dialog.match for health check intent would be kicked off. Step one of that particular handler would be started. It immediately would respond back saying, sure, I can help you with that, and would then remove itself off the stack. In turn, starting the step two of the same processor. That step two, in turn, would start a new dialog, which would be health check dialog. In the health check dialog, step one would start off. Now, since the system is already identified, within step one, there is another dialog called ask sys, which would not be triggered since we know that the system is SAP PI. Instead, the health check dialog would then move on to step two. And within step two, it would identify that the environment variable is still not available. So it would, it would call the ask environment dialog and would move on to step three of the health check dialog within the stack so that when we return, we're back at the next step. Ask and step one would then say, please select an environment. Once the user responds with anything, the dialog would move back to step two of ask env. Now, ask env would then be able to check and say that since the environment that they entered is not one of the approved environments or available environments that we have, it would again replace the ask environment dialog. Now, instead of replacing it, if you were to restart the dialog, you would go into a complex flow where the next step would be the actual previous ask and environment dialog step two stack. That would make things complicated for you to respond back to your users. So the bot builder SDK provides something called a replace dialog. 
where you're able to replace the ask end again with step one in the same dialog stack. Now the user would again be prompted saying please select an environment again. Now, going back to where we were, this time the user gives us an actual environment, saying develop an environment. That would take us back to ask env dialog step two. Since the I, uh, env is identified, it would then move to the health check dialog and would ask for a confirmation prompt whether they would like to go ahead with SAPPI development environment. If the user responds back with yes, it'll move back to the main handler through step four of the health check dialog. In case the user responds back with a no, it would move back to back again and would replace the health check dialog from step one again. So as we can see, it goes to step four, validates the prompt. Since it is yes, it will move to the dialog.match health check step two, where the SAP PI and development environment variables are validated and then used to process the health check request and the response is sent back to the user. So, as we've seen the dialog stack, now let's look at the architecture of how the bot is actually built. As you can see, on the left hand side, we have our Skype channel. In this particular case, we're using Skype, but you could use the same bot with the same dialog model in the dialog flow with any other channel of your choice. The user would come in and every time they send a message, it would be sent to the bot framework where the bot connectors are configured for their channel. That would in turn be sent back to our Node.js runtime where the callback URL is co configured within our bot registration. The Node.js runtime then processes the request and uses any backend systems that it needs, such as Lewis. It also pings the environments whenever that request comes through. And it also uses a system's metadata and information store, which in this case is MongoDB, to retrieve the system to URL mapping. Every system has multiple environments, and each environment has its own address. That address is stored within this data store. Every time the user asks for an environment, within the final processing step comes, the Node.js runtime pulls that data, runs the health check, and responds to the user with the particular response that the user is expecting, whether the system is reachable or not reachable, and if it is reachable, what is the average response time? So now that we've seen how the health check bot works, both from an architectural perspective and also from a dialogue flow perspective, let's now look at the actual demo. So here we are with the demo. On the left-hand side, you can see that I have multiple APIs running. One is for our back office bot backend, and the other is for our system retrieval API that brings back the data from MongoDB. On the right hand side, you can see that I have Slack open with the back office bot added to my Slack um, context. I can go ahead and say, hello. And you can see that it says, greetings intent was matched and it responds back. I can ask stuff like, what can you do? And it, can, it says, I can help conducting health checks for your system. Now you can respond back to the bot asking for the entire thing to be done at once, or you can also respond back to it in a contextual mode. So let's see how that works out. So we'll say, run a health check. And it'll be able to ask me what system I wanna run a health check for. As you know, if I enter something wrong, it'll reprompt me for the system. So I'm gonna say SAP PI. It'll ask me what environment I want to run it for. I'm going to say test. As you can see, it was able to identify SAP PI as the system and test as the environment and responds back asking us to confirm. Let's go ahead and say no. And as you can see, it restarts the entire health check dialog model where we have to again input the system. Now, it's not only that it's able to identify specific words, it's able to identify their synonyms as well. Let's try that out. So let's say that the system is SAP basis and the environment is dev. You can see that it's able to identify that dev means development. So SAP basis development is the system and environment that we'd like to run a health check for. We can go ahead and say yes. 
and you can see that it responds back saying that SAP Basis development is currently healthy with a response time of 58 milliseconds. Now let's go ahead. and run a health check for IIB QA and you're on it. So it was not able to identify the environment this time or the system this time so we're gonna go ahead and give it the environment or the system. So you can see that it was able to identify the environment, but not the system. So we again had to be prompted to give the right system. So in this case, it mapped QA as the environment and SAP PI. You can see that it only asked us for the system, but not for the environment. We can go ahead and say yes. And I'll process our request. We can also see a failure test case. and we can say yes. And you can see that it responds back and understands the overall picture. We can also say thank you. And we'll be able to respond because you're welcome. We hope you liked the demo. If you'd like to see more demos from the Miracle Innovation Labs around cool technologies like cognitive, IoT, and more, please do visit our website at miraclesoft.com slash the labs and check out more videos. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. For more on innovation, please visit miraclesoft.com slash thelabs.